Welcome to another episode of Dividing by Zero. Due to my previous theory, I am now officially banned from using the calculator app. And I heard your feedback, alright? One of my friends called me unhinged at school. Uh, guilty. Which is good, because I am always open to constructive criticism. But first, a quick recap of my previous theory. So, I thought that if imaginary numbers can allow you to make square roots of negative numbers, then I was like, well, why can't we divide by zero and call it an imaginary number? And, well, there's a good reason, because if we tried to create a hypothetical number, let's call it h, and that number would be the result of 1 divided by 0, then the only thing that we could do with that number is multiply it by 0, which would give us any real number. You know, that would not be a very helpful number in math, if we were to define it. And so I tried to prove it that 1 divided by 0 multiplied by 0 would be equal to 1, because the 0 gets reduced. And now that you heard my original theory, you can completely forget about it, because it sucks and it's wrong. It would basically mean that 0 times 1 would be a different number than 0 times 2, which is just not gonna happen. Uh, is he gonna lose? Okay, cool, innocent. But, I have a new theory, and this one, I'm a lot more confident about this one. Here, look at this equation, it's very important. a divided by 0 is equal to x. a will just be some constant that we are trying to divide by 0, and x is the number that we're looking for. x is our result to the division by 0, guilty. The definition of dividing is to multiply by the opposite, guilty. And the opposite number to zero does not exist. That's why there's so much trouble with dividing by zero, and usually people call it undefined. But to me, guilty. Calling a number undefined is kind of like saying that we're still looking for a mathematician strong enough to define this number. But back to the equation. So division means to multiply by the opposite. And let's say the opposite of zero is one divided by zero. Just pretend that is true. Now a multiplied by 1 divided by 0 is once again a divided by 0. We did nothing. That doesn't work. And so the only way to go forward in this equation is to break the law, all right? We're gonna do an illegal operation. Guilty. We will bring the 0 to the other side of the equation. Why is this illegal? Because we are basically multiplying both sides by 0. And you can't multiply both sides by 0 because that can be used to prove anything. Like, I'm being serious. Imagine you have two times... Guilty. Imagine you have an equation like 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. It's obviously wrong, but if you multiply both sides by 0, suddenly it's correct, so it can be used to prove anything. Now, in this one scenario, moving the 0 to the other side, I'm pretty sure can be actually the only thing we can do. Guilty. Because we're not actually proving that it's correct. It's the opposite. We are proving that it's incorrect. a is equal to x times 0. Now, if we put for a, like, let's say 1. 1 is equal to x times 0, and we're looking for x. x does not exist. The solution to 1 divided by 0 does not exist. So it seems like we are allowed to put the 0 on the other side. Guilty. No matter what x you take, Multiplied by 0 is just going to be equal to 0, and it's never going to be equal to 1. That's how multiplying by 0 works. But now hear me out. I'm gonna get very close to the microphone, because this is important. What if a is equal to 0? So we have 0 equals x times 0. Guilty. Now it once again doesn't matter what x is equal to. But this time, this equation is always correct, no matter what x we take. And what's in interesting is that we can even put on x infinity or negative infinity. And this equation is correct. Therefore, any number that is not 0 divided by 0 does not exist. But 0 divided by 0 can be equal to any number, any extended real number, meaning any real number or infinity or negative infinity. It's kind of like the integral of 0, you know, where it can be equal to just anything. So you can divide by zero, it's just that you can only divide one number by zero, and it's zero itself. And you maybe remember back in elementary school when you learned that if you have zero on top of a fraction, then the result is zero, no matter what's on the bottom. And also you probably learned that if... Oh, cool. Innocent. That if the top of the fraction and the bottom of it is the same number, then the result is one. What's funny is that, yeah, 0 and 1 are the result of 0 divided by 0. In fact, every number is, so 0 and 1 are also part of real numbers. So some of you might be thinking, mm, Actually, Hepe, 0 divided by 0 is an indeterminate form. And to that, I say innocent. Yes, yes, it is an indeterminate form. And that further proves my point. 
Just because something is an indeterminate form does not mean that it has no solution. It's the opposite. It means that it has an infinite amount of solutions. Is he just gonna instantly die? No, no, he paddled. Nice. Let's take, for example, infinity minus infinity. Mm, you can imagine you have unlimited bacon, but no bacon. So you get infinite amount of bacon, but you have to also give somebody an infinite amount of bacon. Now you could give all of your bacon to that person and then you would have zero bacon left. But you could keep the first bacon to yourself and give the other person the other infinity. The infinity starting from two bacon. In fact, why not go even further? Why not save two bacons for yourself and give the other person the infinite amount of bacon after the second one? You could keep going like this. You could get a, a gazillion bacon from infinity minus infinity. You could even get infinity by giving the person every second bacon that you own. And you then you would still be left with infinity divided by two bacon, which is infinity. So yes, infinity minus infinity is any number. Any real or any infinity. But back to our beloved zero divided by zero. Like I said, any number multiplied by zero is equal to zero. Therefore, any number is the solution to zero divided by zero. I mean, if you had... Okay, innocent. If you had zero games and you wanted to distribute them to zero children, how many games would each kid have to get in order for you to be left with zero games and each kid have the same amount of games? Well, there's zero kids, so it doesn't matter how many games you give them. You're gonna end up with the correct result. Why am I even looking at this guy? Guilty. So in my mathematical head canon, zero divided by zero is equal to any number. But of course, we used the illegal technique of multiplying both sides by zero, which usually, you know, gives you the result to be any number. <laughs> so don't take my work for granted here. Don't tell your math teacher about what I told you, please. But I want to once again go back to my previous theory when I said for a moment there that if we created that hypothetical number h that would be the result of 1 divided by 0, then that number, that h, multiplied by 0, could be equal to any real number. See, now it makes a lot of sense, because 1 divided by 0 times 0 is just 0 divided by 0, which, like we said two seconds ago, can be equal to any real number. You know? And I'm not saying that we should update math because that wouldn't really be an update, that would be more like math 2. And there's no point in creating a new math just because there's a new number that multiplied by zero gives you anything and that number doesn't have a real representation. So it's honestly kind of useless and there's no really point in just adding it in the first place. Innocent. But anyway, I like my theory. Unlike the last time, we didn't break one of the fundamental axioms of math. Are you kidding me? That's the whole replay. <laughs> Innocent. Somebody in the comments section of that video asked me if I took Calculus 1 and I was like, wait a second, there's a sequel to Calculus? Why did nobody tell me? When are they releasing Calculus 3? But yeah, I got the cape that I'm gonna show you in just a second. But there are more capes. One of them can be obtained by watching TikTok for 15 minutes. There's no great rewards without a great sacrifice. I guess I'm just gonna have to watch TikTok for 15 minutes. And also, well, there's one for watching Twitch for 15 minutes. Now that I can get behind. Here's the cape. See you next time, innocent.